All right, so we're out here in the countryside over in Camotes. Mike's showing us around. We're gonna go up the street. We're gonna look at a couple other places that are in different phases of construction because before it gets to be something like this, it doesn't start like that. It looks quite a bit different. And the way that they build houses here is much different than they do in the West. So we're gonna go over it all in detail. So uh, just as we're in the neighborhood, um, not everybody has running water. So this, this water is for the, this particular area and it's a gathering place. And so those people fill up their water jugs or take their, their baths and their showers so that's right like a here. public watering zone? Uh-huh, but they all pitch in a few pesos per month to cover the water bill for that property, even though most people using it, they don't own that property. But neighbors kind of kind of help. So, so whoever owns in the property. beginning, this is what your house looked like? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to, let's do this. We're gonna, we'll use this house as an example property so even this uh, I don't know if I can see it here but so you get a load of the sand and they're going to shake this and they use a screen and they use here they'll make an a-frame and they'll take a screen like like a, almost like a window frame with screen in the bottom and they'll sift and all the sand will come out in the bottom and they'll throw the bigger rocks out so they'll use that for finished sand and the mortar between the blocks and to fill the blocks this, this is, here you can see right here, here's what they, you see the size of this? Mm -hmm. That's already been screened. How's it screened? Not at a factory, right on site with an actual screen. And so, you know, you don't have to know how to do this. You don't know how to have to know how to build that. What you have to do is be smart enough to get out of their way and let the folks who know how to do it, which are the indigenous people, hire them and let them do it. Labors very reasonable here and so uh, you might look at this and go oh my gosh I guarantee my place looked exactly like this which it's is just a matter of finishing it out yeah versus like you were saying before a lot of the people that their houses currently look like this and they're living in it it's because they couldn't afford to finish it they move in there's a roof there it's soon as you can get that roof on the elements but the um the finishing that really makes it look like a you know, a less primitive house just hasn't been done yet. Yeah, here's, here's a great example of, of, of you don't really see this and, you know, I don't know, maybe you do with somebody's building a Costco or a Walmart, but so you have your hollow block. Look at the scaffolding. This scaffolding goes right through the wall. They, they laid bricks and laid boards and, and laid it under the wall. They'll cut and pull these out and patch over it. But in the meantime, they got scaffolding and they're already, and when, once you look inside, there's rebar going all the way through this wall. They've got rebar sticking out, so I know that there's going to be uh, a spandrel or an awning, if you want to call it that, but it's called a spandrel. That'll be out here and it'll be attached and they'll be using the uh, rebar that's existing in the wall. So rebar is going across this way. It's going vertical. You can see a piece here. This is obviously going to be a window. Um, these are the first things you do is you excavate, get down far enough, you'll tie steel, you'll have the skeleton, the steel form around it. You see the box? And you have a ring. You see the, the column going up? And that goes all the way through, all the way into the ground. So, um, looks like they're might, maybe even putting a second story on here. That's how, how I would indicate that because why would you tie that steel that tall? Right. So they may be doing a second story here, but this is simply formed in and poured, and poured from the top with a bucket. A guy standing up here or up on top, this guy hands it to that, that, that guy pours right down. It's about built. as manual as you can get. So yeah. they're taking the, they're screening this, mm -hmm. and then they're making that into this? Absolutely, yeah, well actually, they're not going to screen, they're going to do it rough and they're going to add some bigger piece, some one inch or three quarter, we call graba here. It could be rock or it could be coral, the hard coral. And so it's like when you're, when you're, you've seen, if lots of us have seen uh, concrete poured in, in, in our Western world and the truck comes up and you can hear those rocks going around inside, that's the bigger piece, that'll all be in here. Mm -hmm. But not here. Yeah. That's when the screening comes in for this and then you have to fill each, they're hollow blocks. Uh -huh. They don't leave them hollow, they fill them with this. So 
So they'll go along and they'll fill it and then they'll lay a, a layer here, the mortar. I'll fit the next block in and I'll whip the wall. And they're remarkably straight. And how they make them straight is they'll nail a nail up there someplace and a bolt on the bottom of a fishing line and let it hang. Or they'll also do it at a diagonal angle. Yeah. Just build it right up to that. Yeah. And that's also how they'll finish it. They'll put concrete on the exterior of this. The sanded concrete without the rock. Mm -hmm. So they're using that same base material, but at different levels. It'll have a larger piece. If you're doing columns, it'll have that other piece there in it when they're doing just stucco and then it'll be just sand and concrete if you're going for a smoother finish. And then at the very end, like on your inside, if you don't want a stucco finish in your living room, it'll just be concrete, the powder, and water. And they'll mix that up and they'll smooth it over. So if anybody has a stucco house, if you wanted it smooth on the outside, that's the way it would be done here. You would just use the, it's almost creamy, and they just trowel it on and they keep troweling it. And that's how they, they get it smooth. I, so if we look at my house, my living room, my houses are, my house is this thick, a block, filled block, and at least a half to three quarters of concrete and concrete on the outside of it. And then on the inside, on the inside of my house, it's very smooth because I used creamy concrete to make it because I, I wanted to have a drywall look, not an exterior stucco look in my living room. Yeah. So I took that extra step. And it looks beautiful, in my opinion. And I'm the one that really matters what I think of my house. You know, it's nice to show it to other people or they want to get an idea how to do something. But ultimately, it's what I think about it. And I, I'm proud of myself and uh, the effort that I put in and the forethought to know what I wanted before I did it. It's amazing to see that something that's like this can yeah. turn into something. I, I, know what this, I know what this looks like. When I was building mine my first time, I'm like, how can, this 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 looks like Navajo. <laughs> looks yeah. like it looks like something you know 200 years ago. But I'm telling you, whatever you can imagine with columns, you can put a column over there. You could put a column out here. You could put a 45 degree wall in. You can do whatever you want. But so you this have is to. This an example of the form right here. Yeah. That they used it. That was going all There's the way your form. It. Here, here it is. Much any nails. See, there's the plywood. There's the cocoa lumber. So the cocoa lumber starts as a tree. You're saying that you pay like you have around to pay five dollars or so to get a permit to cut down the tree. On maybe that guy's land. Maybe it's your own land. You want to cut down a tree, you, you can't just arbitrarily cut, deforest the island. You have to get a permit. Not a problem getting a permit for cocoa lumber. And they'll go out with a chainsaw. None of this is taken to a mill. They don't put it on a diesel truck and haul it to a mill. They cut it down and they cut it on site with a chainsaw. As close as possible so to minimize all the transportation costs. So, and, and you can get a couple sizes. You can get this, you can get this. Uh, scaffoldings, they build scaffoldings right here. They build your own saw horses. They, there's just, so this is like hand done with a chainsaw? Absolutely. That they're milling? They absolutely. don't have any kind yeah, of it's, special it's, tool or anything? There's no table saws, there's no mill. Wow. This is done in the jungle floor. So if, if you look at this tree behind us, there's a coconut tree. If you cut that coconut tree down right here, it would all be done here. In fact, I think you'll see sawdust. I think they did cut down it. Yeah, they did. Here's one right here. See this tree? Here was one. There was one here. There was another tree here. So they've, they've cut these down. Look at all the, look at the chainsaw. Look at all the sawdust. They sectioned it up, made lumber. So they started off with a couple trees in the front yard. They had, this obviously came on a truck, so the let's, sand. Let's get a look at this. Let's see what this is. Look. That's the edge of it right there. Kind of hard to use that as a two by four, but they will take this and make it a, a seat or a bench sometimes. You'll see that, that's the skin because it does not carrying a lot of weight. But out here, they'll use this wood over and over and over for different forms and everything. Um, coconut gets eaten by termites pretty easy. It's not a dense wood. It's probably comparable to a Douglas fir. But out here, Douglas fir would get eaten up pretty fast because it's a lighter wood. It's good for construction, it's affordable, but it's basically disposable when you're done. So um, when you're building, that's what, you're going to use. 
we're from uh, Western world. We can make all the kind of mistakes we want and we can bring in our own scaffolding and stuff. My experience is that thing where we say this is how we do it in America or this is how we do it in Australia or this is how we do it in Great Britain. It's, it's a wasted words and it's better to shut up and learn and get your guy, get somebody, get somebody who's done it before. Is this normal? What should I expect? I, I, I'm, to toot my own horn, I, that's what I did is I, I said it twice and then I realized nobody cares that this is how we do it in America. I was more like for ego. I wanted them to think I wasn't stupid. It doesn't matter. They're being paid to work and they don't care how I do it someplace else. Just make sure I have the materials, give them good snacks. That's a nice thing you can do if you if you respect your workers. So so this right here, this these columns. Yes. You're saying that the this form right here, they they put it around and made the, the box and that, then just poured yeah. in with buckets. From the top? From the top, all the way down. And then there's the rebar that's inside it. So they set up the rebar first. Mm. Build yep. the form around and, it. And you see how the rebar sticks out? They'll yeah. drill a little hole in the wood and they'll put the, bend the rebar, hook the rebar through and catch it to the skeleton frame. Up there you can see the rocks. Uh -huh. where it's more coarse. Yeah, but they chip side. that off. And the reason they chip that off is because you want to adhere to it. It's harder to throw up against this, so they rough it up. So look at all this pebbling. Look at all this cutting up here on this top beam. Mm -hmm. It was smooth like this. See how smooth this comes? Uh -huh. They purposely scarred it up so that it would be able to adhere to it. I see. So... That's why I know they're doing some, they're gonna go higher. Plus you can see the rebar sticking up. You know, they've got it formed. They've got it formed over here. They are gonna go another level up on this one. And why shouldn't they? Look how stout this is. You could see the, the, the footprint that they put that column down in the ground. There's not a wind in the world that could blow this house down. It's not made of straw, you know, it's not made of sticks. It's, it's concrete. It's, yeah, it's, so you and talk with about all the rebar this handles earthquakes and stuff pretty well also yeah these are like these are bunkers yeah they really are another thing people go oh my god all the block but what if there was an earthquake it's not really gonna i mean could it fall down yeah but you've got rebar running all the way through the walls you can see them bent up up on top you see that piece sticking up that piece comes all the way through this wall and it's tied into the ground and it's tied <clears throat> steel this this column down here underground has rebar going to that one. It's all protected inside and the concrete. The first, this is probably the first block and it sits down on top of that. So they pour that form, they pour concrete over the rebar that looks like that, but it's laid down here underground. And then the, the wall comes off of that. That's what the rebar is hooked to. This is all connected and it's all back to these corners and the rebar is, rebar is down and bent out and then concreted into the ground. So, I sleep really good at night knowing I don't come on. Yeah. And now I use, I used a, uh, a metal roof truss system, which basically means I just didn't use wood. I didn't use two by four or two by six like we do in America. I used angle iron that's all welded together. And then with uh, sparlins, they go across and the sheeting goes on. Well, some but, people use wood or is it pretty much all metal? Well, they, uh, here you don't want to use cocoa lumber because it'll get eaten up and your roof will be gone in 20 years. Even if you treat it, it it's very hard to keep the, the, them out. It, it's okay to treat it like my garage, but you see it's right where I can get to it. You can't get up in your attic and retreat it in 10 years or something. Mm -hmm. But here you would use mahogany, uh, wood called mahogany, gemolina, uh, there's some really dense woods. You know, it's not something you want to cut with your hand because they're so hard to cut. But they're also resistant to termites because termites don't want to eat it either. So they'll use mahogany, that wood we love to make furniture out of. That's wasted. It's up in your, your truss systems of these houses. So I didn't want to, ecologically speaking, I didn't want to have that if I wanted mahogany. I wanted to buy that wood have them go down and cut that tree down and make me the beautiful cabinets I have in my kitchen. Those are mahogany, but I did not want to do it. 
And I also wanted to have my metal roof welded to my rebar. Mm -hmm. Hurricane clips, I, I, I don't care what kind of hurricane clip it is. When you're welding your roof to your columns that are buried into the ground and concreted, there isn't any amount of wind. It might take your sheeting off, but it's not gonna take your roof off. Mm -hmm. Not like we see you know, on the storms and things like that. You can't, it's welded. So it's, you know, so I feel real comfortable. Uh, stuff you can see here, this is all their pinning. Uh, they'll probably, this will probably be a, a sidewalk area out here. They'll backfill this stuff as they, as they excavated for these columns. What do you do with your material? You put it inside. If anybody can get a camera and you look inside and go, oh my gosh. Well, this is the same thing I did. All that rock is inside. There's your elevation change. You get your house up off the ground, it's tropical. When it rains here, you want to have... So you're just going to pour right on top of that. That's going to fill up, make it so you're not going to have to bucket it. They'll use some smaller there. fill on top of this and grade it. They'll drill into the wall and put a rebar there. And so we'll have rebar, uh, one foot on center, a grid laying on this floor. They'll use a rock to prop it up to keep it about that much off the ground and they'll probably pour three inches of concrete in the interior. In America, we build the pad first. And most people are looking at this going, this is why it looks so ridiculous. And this is, no, you do all of this work, you use that to get your grade inside and then you take some of this extra material, smaller, and fill it in here and grade it out and you pour right on top of it. So it's... It's a process we're not just not used to. And, totally. And, and then we come with a superior attitude, but not here. There's a reason why they build the way they do. And, and um, in the old days, it was, you know, teak wood and things like that. We see some old places, wood, but they were, or bamboo, and they were constantly having to, to uh, rebuild because of, you know, erosion or the water and, and uh, termites. But now with the accessibility to steel, and the blocks and being able to get concrete out here in large quantities. You now these places, these bunkers last. And you can make them as big as you want and as fancy as you want. So, That's amazing. yeah. It's really a definitely, the, it turns the whole thing over. I mean, doing the floor last. It does. The walls first, it just, it, it, it definitely is different. Once so, you understand what's going on with it, it makes sense. Cause I think that in the end you're ending up with you know, a more quality product than we're used to seeing. So it's gonna it's gonna last a lot longer than your typical, you know, two by four house. Sure. Uh, let me get in and show you something. If you you can just take a look from out there, but let me do it from in here. Now, so if you look around, if you guys if you look around in here, you'll go. Wait a second. What are we missing? At this stage in in uh, the USA. You're going to see some electrical. Where's the electrical? I'll tell you where the electrical is going to be. Either here or here. And what they're going to do is before they coat this with about a half inch of mortar, you call it thin set, you call it whatever the name you want, but it's concrete sand. And they're going to coat this with a half to three quarters of an inch. They're going to come in here and they're either going to most likely chip out with a chisel and a hammer a box and put the box in here and chip out down and run your conduit right here down. Everything is done into the surface of this and then they'll cut, cover it over and coat it. So you don't, you're not doing electrical. When I first did my house, I kept thinking, um, uh, how are we gonna put the con conduit inside the hollow block? Once again, that's why I shut my mouth and quit saying this is how we do it in America. I was afraid of looking stupid. It doesn't matter, I'm the guy paying. They know what they're doing. So I took, I did jobs on the site. They were quite frankly better at this because this is what they do. And they're craftsmen. And a lot of them are just as proud of doing what they do. And I say they, Filipinos. They're just as proud of their work as I was with mine, whatever I did for a living and, and was I successful, but I took pride in my work. I really wouldn't appreciate it. My job, people going, well, you know how we do it here. And this is how we do it there. It's like. Well, am I not doing it well enough? They build a nice solid house that'll last. Can you imagine the insulation factor of this? Bug resistant, storm resistant, wind resistant, earthquake resistant. 
Um, and this is a tropical climate, and so it stays cooler. And so we don't have any R38 or R19 insulation in the walls. You've got, by the time you're done, at least five inches thick of concrete. So I, I have a total amount of re different respect than I did when I began building out here quite a few or a few years ago. So, um, but this this reminds me of mine of when I started and I was questioning and questioning and I was questioning things like this. Look at this piece of wood. It looks like a branch from a tree. No, we would never do that in America. You want we need a two by six and then we'll put that here. You can see where it's cut. This came from the tree right there because this is not this is not cocoa. This is just whatever tree that was that they cut down. But can you see it from the outside? Yeah, you could see it. I mean, so that's going to be cased into the concrete. Yeah, yeah. that'll be. This will be. They'll keep. They'll cut this off, and they'll form in, and they'll put a window right here. And so there's your trim. That's about the only wood that'll be here. But I guarantee, if they pulled that out, the rest of this that's all rebarred inside will be there. It, it's not going to fall. So. Now these guys are coming along and they're thinking ahead. When they excavated all of this, here it is. So they've raised their elevation when there's a storm or all the water that comes in with storms and uh, typhoons and things like that. You want to be up. You know, there can be a foot of water outside, but it won't be inside. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's go see what one of the finished products of this, what yeah. this is going to turn into. Because it's night and day. Yeah. Without actually seeing it like this in this form, it's hard to imagine that this turns into to what yeah. you're currently living in now. I know another spot that has the inside outsides done and they're doing the roof and so I, that might be of more interest and it's Let's a bigger take a look at that. bigger project. These are my friends uh, from Cebu. Nice this is my you. friend Bryce. Hi Bryce. Nice this is Jake. Hey. Jake. This is Bryce's Bryce's wife. Hi, I'm G. Hi. This is Jake, and Jake Scal, and Rain, and Ricky. I did everything, uh, the Aquitex primer. Uh-huh. Too cool. Yeah. And now we're waiting for the root, and are, you can do the skim Are you going to do coat. the skim? Yeah, right. Skim it up, make it nice and smooth. Uh, let's see. Hey, come, come. I want to show you. So this is really good because this is what I was just talking about. We, we stopped by another one that just started in my neighborhood, a house, okay. showing them the block. So that's new. Remember for me and you? Yeah, right. We're like, we don't use a lot of block, hollow tile. That's true. Right? Uh, yeah. It's two by four, right. insulation, gypsum. So, right? And so explaining this process, here they've already got a coating on it, but a lot of times it just gets carved in the block. If you look real close, you can you can see the block, and you can see a full half inch of of concrete of of the plaster that's gone over the block, and uh, so it's cut in. A lot of times, it's cut straight into the block before they do this one. Sometimes it's plastered. It, you don't want to stop progress. So if you does this always come down on the top? They, they they no, they run them sometimes in the floor. This one's from the floor. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I'm guessing that one went into the floor, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So you can run your conduit. See, here's your conduit. Not fancy word for plastic pipe, conduit. You know, in America, they may have codes. It's got to be a metal or galvanized or this or that. But if it's a commercial job, I, I'm not a technical builder in America, but this, this right here is the standard how it's done here. This is to code. This is not done of do-it-yourselfer. He's got a contractor that's doing the electrical. Right. The round one is electric for electrical and a blue one for water. Mm -hmm. So they're two different codes of pipe. But both of them Still are PVC. PVC. Yeah. And then... That's one that's finished. That pretty much looks like America there. Yeah, 100%. And that's what we had to go with. I love this. I, I love the, the structure. I love the angle iron, and it's all welded up, and it's, look yeah, at his, well. and look at his beam he's got here. Look how long his beam is, spanning this carry load, and he gets to go to this for his, his ceiling. Look how long his, 
And this is going to be the kitchen over there. The you, uh, this is a this is a great a great picture right here. I mean, this tells us a, a story. Here's your finish. There's some block. There's some metal. And there's your roofing material. So if you're looking to try to make this all really like complicated, it's pretty much that simple, but on a large scale. That right there. There's your block. That we just saw that on another one. It's starting, and then it, it, you you've got. You've got your plaster, your finish over that. But here, this is all, that would be attic up there. So there's no reason to have it finished up in the attic. Nobody's ever gonna go up there. It's, it's only for utilities. But you can see the angle iron instead of mahogany. Well, leading into the rebar. Yeah. And if you notice all of this, it doesn't come this color. It gets painted with the rust inhibitor. That's called red lead, and that's a solvent-based primer. So the solvent-based primer, so you'll never have to worry about your, your roof rusting up. The weld, some people like to say, well, the welding isn't good. Look, it's not for show. It's not on a boat trailer. Yeah. This is, just needs to be welded, and they do. They burn, and they, you know, they got welds all over the place. What you want to do is go up and touch those up with the brush, the welds, because that would, that's where the rust would start. So you want to touch up your, your welds, and you can get a guy to do that with a little brush for about eight or ten dollars a day. Follow it around. But all of this gets done on the ground, of course. All of the treating this angle iron. This angle iron comes the same as it does at any home store, but here you put it on two sawhorses out in the yard. And, Paint it up. See, he's nodding because, but when both of us started, we had really no idea. I'm just ahead of him because I've already done one and finished one or a couple of them. And um, Bryce is doing one now. Bryce is from France. I'm from America. But <laughs> we ended up with the same kinds of difficulties or problems or how, how do you do it? This is not how we do it. Uh, but that's how we became friends. I saw him building the house. He, He's got a family member, a friend of mine, and so I couldn't help jumping in. Mm -hmm. and, Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Oh, 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 yeah. And one of the big uh, and worst work was the septic tank over there. Yeah, that was the septic. Because this is also another way that we used to do in France. Yeah. Dude, it's looking great. Yeah. How long have you been constructing this so far? Uh, since December. It's a lot of progress. Months, right? well, 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 it was quite fast, but after between the typhoon, the storm, the rain, I know sometimes they cannot work all the time. Yeah. And now they did a challenge time for two weeks. They have to finish the roof. Then. But they also had a backup because of the typhoon took a lot of roofs. So roofing materials. There was yeah. no roofing exactly. materials. Yeah. Whatever was in stock went to repair. So That's price true. is like. I uh, so. missed almost one month. Yeah. But now it's okay. Huh? It's yeah. still done. We order everything. Yeah. And I push them to do that quickly, but. Nicely also, and actually, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy for you. I, I am. This is not what we were looking at. He and I were stumbling across moving right. boulders in here. <laughs> That's true with the gizzo. Yeah, yeah. We order much more over there to put over there to do the loading. We were wheelbarrowing gizzo in the. And all the password was going to be concrete. Over there, we start, and just until here that we can grow some plants over there near the wall. And I will do also like uh, maybe a dirty kitchen or just a workshop over there on the septic tank. I will use the, the base, you know, for the foundation. Nice. Something to just stop my, uh, my uh, tools, everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just extend 40 centimeters from the gutter. I choose a special uh, large gutter. Then when it's raining, so sometimes you can see you have to work like that when it's raining. Then now it's going to be dry, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you pour, you're going to pour here? Exactly. This is going to be the, the block, the tool from the uh, 
uh, master bedroom and for here the block for the aircon the small box you know i will protect that so when you're when you're doing these these sidewalks you always it's like he's gonna have looks like approximately four feet it almost looks like four feet so when you're pouring here on this side over here you'll pour it a little lower that way if rain comes in it doesn't exactly. sit next to the house it uh, just gravity takes it away right. so you might pour it maybe a half inch lower and you'll get plenty of fall over a four foot span mm -hmm. you know uh construction people could tell you you know because they build skyscrapers and everything but but we're out here if you pour this side a half inch lower over only this far there's no way the wa the rain's going to come come uphill get into the crack it's just going to flow away it does on my house and it will on here or anywhere else but if you do it flat sure enough it's going to go to the house and water is our enemy once we're done once we're building so yeah. we don't want to have erosion and it, when it when it gets into the foundation it'll settle the foundation so you always want to pack your floors and that's another thing I helped him with. I have a plate tamper, so I came and packed his floors so that when you pour the concrete over five years, seven years, maybe even an earthquake, that it's solid under that. You don't get a gap. You get a gap, and if that concrete cracks, then your tiles that are on top of it in the house will crack. So if you want to do it right, do it right the first time. Pack your soil. So um the, he's got a floor the last one didn't that's the only difference if we went to the and half of this is boulders that you guys were putting oh, in and poured on top he had of big boulders here i mean big boulders we were hauling them in because we were hammering them out of that hole that hole is five six feet deep and all the way across and it was solid rock i'm gonna show you guys something you can, real quick you can see on the back also see he take the angle iron he made a beam so you may look at all, all of these pieces together make that structure and it's extremely strong but right here they're carrying weight right here so they you can see there's an angle iron on top 45s coming across 180 or 90 degree turn here the 245s come across this is a beam right here look, look at the, the fascia a lot of pieces got a 1 by 10 and that's the wood they put around they, it's mm. called the fascia this one has an angle iron structure behind it and now it's got the sheet metal colored sheet metal looks really good from the outside but I just during the typhoon I had a coconut tree from way over there fell on my house it hit my oh. my gutter That's why we cut the coconut tree. I know but you know what it did nothing you know why because really? it's metal it's like yeah, bulletproof right? it just hit it and rolled off okay yeah it didn't crush my house but another reason is because it's all iron behind it right. Right. So I got a, I got a small little dent in my gutter, but it, it wasn't. Because this big tree and the big coconut also. Yeah. And I did purple lumbers also, matter, you know. What kind of tree is that? Was that a, is that a gemolina? No. No? Because gemolina is good. We will use for seats and uh, for the table. Yeah. table, yeah. Garden table. Yeah, I very seldom waste anything out here. It'll be cooking wood if not, right? Yes. Hmm? Yeah. I think so, right? It's something, something that's kind of nice. Let's see the rest of your place. Sure. Look how big. Can you make a tour, babe? Yeah. So, it's gonna be the kitchen there. you can see the water outlets. Mm -hmm. All the outlets from the washing machine, dishwashing is gonna be in the water, in the, in the garden, I mean. Not in the septic tank, because we use a lot of water then. just to irrigate all the garden. And Are you pulling all the water off the roof or where is the water coming from? Uh, no, yeah, we will uh, maybe use for the tank. Just because septic tank after is so, so much rocky, you know, then I'm scared sometimes then it's really rain a lot. It's gonna be full. Yeah. Then we wow. try to split and all the water we will use for the garden. Where do you get the water coming in? Is it coming in from the municipality or are you Wait. pulling it all up there? Yeah, from the municipality I have to build a long way until there, 250 meters, then put the, put the pipe and just link over there on the main one. Okay. So this is going to be the next step. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful floor plan, yeah. nice big rooms. Yeah, yeah. Look, at, look how big the hallway is. Mm -hmm. Then uh, with all the plugs, we, we use USB, the view over there, 
and the dressing over there, and the bathroom with the Italian shower, the toilet over there, and the sink over there. Okay, and nice big sink. Okay, so, so Bryce, we just sm saw a smaller one, like a Filipino style house. The rooms are small. Everything was kind of small. You saw the room we were in. But you can do as big or as grand as you want. You can do two stories. It's the same process. It's just more columns. Look, but look how big. He's got this big dressing area, I guess closet area. But this is a really big bathroom. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. it's much enough. You know, the bathroom and the room. Right? Yeah. It's basically your imagination is, is what you right, can do. It's an older plan with a Cozy Casa, it's a free website. Yeah. And it's really good fun also to do that and say, think, ah, oh, no, I will change and you remove all the put, you know, uh, over the wall, the windows and everything. So look, here's, a, uh, here's a before and after all in one shot of the wall. The what? You either see this or you see this, but very seldom do you see them together. You exactly. know, I'll just get coated right up. Mm -hmm. So, like, look, you already got concrete out here. And it was uh, 10 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And the main pipe providing the water is going to be under the, under the wood there. So, yeah. And after we'll extend over there in the, in the main room. Mm. Okay, they'll have a, a ceiling drop down here. Interesting the way they make the ceiling. So they'll drill the holes and put rivets and they'll use the galvanized, almost like that two by fours they do in offices. You've seen office buildings, all that. Well, they use that same type of material. It's called a, um, I think it's called, it's called a spar lens. And they'll cut it and they will, they will rivet it to there and it'll hang down and they'll bend it here and they'll, they'll make a whole grid going across just like a drop ceiling in an office space, but they'll use this as their support and they'll drop it down here and then they'll probably use, or most of us use here, a concrete board. You can go quarter, three eighths, half inch, and it's a concrete board. Um, they call that in... Uh, and you just suspend that with like some yeah. recessed screws, holes or something? Screws will go up into that galvanized and do the joints with a two-part epoxy compound, not mud, that'll break. Mm -hmm. So you do the, almost like a marine epoxy, and that's what you do the joints, sand those out, paint it, and put recessed lighting and do whatever you want up here. And what you do is you have a lot of structure up here. So, so here, if you were doing something and you wanted to do something, you, you can always add in here if you need to, you know? It, but if you look at the amount of steel that's that's that, that's used in the it's it's a lot i mean look at this look at that grid look how many pieces of steel that are welded together to make this you use a lot of a lot of wood a lot of mahogany and a lot of nails and i just don't think you get the structural strength as you get with this you could take a little shot of this right here, but you've got the rebar bent over, and if I'm not mistaken, you're probably welded on the back side somewhere. You can see the, the rebar that comes from the column and goes over. You can see this piece, and you see the, the rebar coming up. You, you can, it, it, it's just all connected. It's not hammer nailed in, in, a, in, a, in America. Yeah, it's all welded in there. Yeah, we have a, a you know, hurricane clips. Why? Because you've got two by fours or two by sixes and you've, you've got studs and you've got a top plate, you know, that's two two by fours put together. And then, and then to that, you, you, you've, you've got your rafters or your truss system laying on top of it and then you clip it there so we're going to hold it all down. Yeah, not in a, not in a hurricane because we see it in Florida all the time. Away they go, away they go, away they go. Well, it might take that sheeting off, but it's not going to take this whole skeleton, this truss system off. 
If you want a picture, look at the amount of metal where the sun's coming through there. Look how much metal is in that roof, angle iron. It's not going anywhere. I can understand if, if, if wind gets under and takes the sheet, but I'm gonna tell you a little secret about out here. So we had Hurricane um, uh, uh, Yolanda, and everybody who had a gutter on their house, they didn't lose their sheeting. But when you didn't have a gutter and the air got under it, but if you look at even the gutters, because that gutter acts like a sea, and so you have your roof come down so the water goes into your gutter, well, it also keeps from letting the wind, because the wind doesn't do that. You're gonna get, air's gonna get under, but it didn't lift anybody's off. The people who didn't have gutters took them off. And that was right by the sea. So where we were at earlier today, my neighbors, because I have neighbors, I had one who lost his roof and one didn't, and I was like, I need to learn, because I'm gonna put another house right on the ocean. And it was the gutters. And now I just, we just had a typhoon. My house, nothing. I mean, I got one dent, and we can go to the back of my place and you can see a little dent. Looks like somebody kind of sideswiped it. That's a whole coconut tree. But it's behind that little face here. My gutter is all of this, just like his when you look out underneath. It's all angle iron. It's, it's beefy. So, um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of doing it right the first time. You know, if you want something fancy, you know, go ahead. But I mean, just doing it right, doing the right materials. And when you're building with this kind of stuff, you should feel comfortable that, you know, three little pigs, you know, the big bad wolf isn't gonna blow this down. It's not gonna blow down. It's, you could lose some sheeting, but that's why I really like a, a rain gutter system um, because it protects from that, but I also like using what's nature. And you got all that water, all that fresh water coming down. I never have to worry about, it's the Philippines, it's a third world country. What if they say, oh yeah, our pumps are down? What do you do? I don't do anything. I have, I'm running off of rainwater, and I treat my own water. So, um, I don't I feel comfortable with it, and I sleep really well at night knowing that, I don't care if it's an earthquake, my place isn't going anywhere. Even if it shook so bad, part of the wall cracked. That's fine, I've seen that. Not in my house, but I've seen it. What do you do? You just patch the wall, because it's not coming down, because there's rebar running from here all the way up through. There it is, right there. It came all the way up. So even if it shook so bad that this wall started coming apart, it's not falling in. This whole wall doesn't come in. It's, it's, it's all attached. So, you know, I, I really like I think we get a much, much stronger, sturdier construction for a fraction of the cost. And I'll tell you where it's at, it's in the labor. Because a bag of concrete here is about the same as Hawaii or California. You see where all the materials go? Extra materials, the, yeah. the blocks. Look, you, you have everything there. You have old concrete, you have busted up concrete. This is called guiso, it's really limestone and they just excavate it from wherever, but it's, it's limestone soil, and we call it guiso here. Good to see you. Too, huh? Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah, good to see it, good to see it. Salamat. So where are we going, Mike? So we're going, um, the house I have here that I built is about 120 meters from the sea, and then from there, there's about 300 meters down, I have a one hectare sea lot that is a peninsula with a lagoon. This is a friend of mine's property here. I learned a lot from him. A lot, everything I, I, I got, you know, I didn't do a, a lot of book reading before I came out here. I've talked to a lot of folks, sat with them. I ask simple questions like, uh, based on everything you've done, if you could do it all over again, what would you do? And people will tell you, I would do this. And then there's a change that they would have. This so, property here is my neighbor's property, and my property's on the other side. So that's how close I am to the house. Over here real quick, and I'm gonna show you guys, you can see at least my coastline a little bit here. My gosh, who has cleared my land? <laughs> I must thank them. <laughs> 